Hey guys, welcome back to DMAC Customs YouTube channel. Um, back on the Area 51, just for a change. Back into the boot trunk area, just for a change. So at some stage in this, I can't even, don't even know how old the car is. It was born in 1951, but at some stage in its life, something heavy has been dumped in, in the trunk floor and it's, and it's bent it, as I've discovered. Um, whilst putting the petrol tank in. Well, after I put the petrol tank in. Anyway, it's bent and I've got to try and fix it. I'm gonna try and push it back up, straighten it back up. And if you stick around to the end, you'll see how I put a, just one simple swage line into the spare tire weld delete panel that I welded in there 18 months, two years ago by hand in situ without a bead roller. Even though I've got a bead roller, but the panel's already in the car, so I put a swage in there without it. Hand tools, jack, bits of wood, hammers, bits of metal bar, stuff like that. So stick around and I'll show you what I do. Sort of. You won't actually see that much. You'll see a little bit, but you get the general idea anyway. So let's get into it. And you might get a bit of a look see at that. It's my son's uh, gap fiddle. Gap fiddle bass. It's electric. It's gonna be. Not at the moment. Okay, so this is the issue trunk floor a couple of years ago during the lockdown i did this delete on the old um spare tire well because with the roof chop the spare tire won't fit in there anyway so i made up this piece and just kind of like lap jointed it and whatnot i wasn't really paying attention to <laughs> details when i did this and i was just looking for something to do to fill in some time while i couldn't go out and work and things like that so Never really been very happy with this. I may take it out and do it again, um, depending on how the rest of this floor kind of comes together. But if you look closely, hopefully you can see this on the camera, but it looks like something's been heavy, has been dropped in here, and it's pushed the boot floor down, and it's puckered that bit up. Now, at first I thought it was actually just kind of how the floor was. And again, I wasn't really paying attention to the details, but I've kind of come to the conclusion after putting the petrol tank in the petrol tank sits a little bit too low and this the filler is really close to the chassis rail up under under there so i have sort of sort of um surmised or guesstimated that this is actually all pushed in and out of shape and then when i run a few straight edges and that over it it's kind of is well and truly out of shape so what I'm going to do, attempt to do anyway, is just see how much I can straighten it out. If I can't straighten it out, then I will investigate making a whole new floor. Still got holes and shit and a couple of little pinholes and stuff to sort out anyway and figure out what's happening with the filler tube coming through the floor and that big ugly hole that's there. Um, I have to figure something out for that to kind of fill it in a bit somehow. And... Yeah, so before I can do any of this, I've got to get this thing up off the ground. Um, get the gas tank out of it and see what I can figure out. Hmm, so I've got to get some height into this thing because I can't get under there like that. See, that's a, I'm a bit big for that. Uh, so yeah, first up, I've got to get some air into these bags so I can hopefully get a jack underneath it and get it up off the ground. Alrighty, so that's the gas tank out, as you saw, if I put that in the edit. Um, so, now I've got to figure out where to start with this, like how to, do I start by trying to push this up, 
which might bring some of that back into line, which might bring that back into line, because this is kind of looks like where the damage was done, like here, this is quite, sort of drops off here, goes whoosh, up that way. I'm thinking I might put a jack underneath it with some blocks or something like that and see if that can kind of push it up. A little ponder and then we'll figure out how we're going to attack this. Probably not the best camera angle, but anyway. Hey guys, just want to quickly interrupt this video to politely ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, that'd be really, really choice. And yeah, because otherwise you'll miss out on all that is the Area 51 project. And you don't want that, surely. Hmm. Okay, back onto it. You can take a look at that. This is from the front or rear edge sort of thing back to the back and that's actually sitting a bit low too. It's got a low point here compared to the sides. I'll show you. What I'm thinking of doing is getting up under here and sorry, sorry. Oh it's putting a block across there, jacking it up off this point here, try and push this sort of back area of the, the boot floor up. And what I don't know is, is, if, is if this bit here has got a bit of a sway in it, who knows, look at the surface rust. This is terrible, at least it's not full on rust. Um, I think before I got this car they brushed some paint stripper or something on underneath and never got back to finishing it because when you weld on it, it smells real strange and you know, some of the thicker paint's peeling off kind of like that. But yeah, we'll get to all this cleaning it all up proper when we get the body off but I just thought I'd show you what was under here. Looks kind of scoty but it's actually relatively solid. There's a few pinholes, a little bit of daylight here and there. Couple of old patches here. This that hump over the other side there, I've got a funny feeling it might actually be factory to allow for the fuel filler because that runs through 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 here. So I'm thinking that that um particular who do you mean what's it like hump weird formation is actually supposed to be there, maybe? So I might leave it for now and see see how I can get the rest of this to kind of shape up. If it um, looks like it wants to flatten down when everything else sort of comes back into line, I'll endeavour to flatten it down. But for now, I'm going to target all this really obvious damage and dentage and stuff and see whether I can get it to um, kind of pull back up and get back into some sort of shape. And then I might work out a way to put some kind of more bracing across the, the front edge up by the c-notch because that's a little bit kind of probably one of its weak points at the moment hmm so get onto that get, get the jack back around here since i put it away and yeah need it back now so oh you hear that on my wrist um so yeah get into that was that all dented I'd love to know the history of some of these old cars, why they're so kind of got beat up things in weird places like like this is all you know all chewed along here strange little dents in that in their gussets like maybe someone had some chains wrapped around it at some stage and was dragging it around with a tractor or something like that oh god
Okie dokie. Uh, so, about 17 days later of jacking up, lying down, jacking up, hammering, stretching, beating, whacking trunk floors. Um, I've actually managed to get it kind of up where it pretty much should be. Now, is it perfect? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it's like pulled it up so that'll pull the old um, petrol tank up to where it needs to be to clear the chassis rail for the filler tube and the whole snowball effect type of thing if something's out everything's out basically I've, I've pulled it up about 15 mil millimeters which is about just over half an inch for for the imperial speakers yeah so about it's moved up about that big that much now in the center so that's pulled the whole trunk floor up which will give me that Stop that rub on there where the old filler was. Hopefully it's not too far now going the other way, but we should be right. On the downside, opened up a few little thin bits in here. I'll show you. Come. See there? I don't know, hopefully you can see it on the camera. It's a little bit thin through there. There was a hole there that's been welded up at some point. Another little pinhole in there. Uh, is that it? I thought there was more than that. I'm sure I saw another one somewhere else, but anyway, um, yeah, so gonna make up a brace now to support the, the front back side of the boot floor, just up the, the C notch end. So that's the front, yeah? Okay, so no, but yeah, so it stretched it up a little bit here, which is gonna help pull it up level. I'll get my straight edge and show you, see, no fingers, a little bit more up in there still, in there, but yeah, that's close enough, I reckon, yeah, a little bit there, yeah, it's about even except for that, but there I've stretched it up a little bit more, so what I'm going to do now is I might make up a brace for across the back there and maybe trim up that folded up lip which is actually just a bit of the boot floor I folded up with some vice grips um, trim that up and sort of make up a flat bar brace or something that goes across the back and plug weld that in and such I think and that way it'll help support this floor from that front back yeah okay, the front back Whoops. Hey, I got my um weld through copper stuff again. It's got a uh, just sand and wire brush the back of that up up thing. Um so because I'm gonna put a Piece of flat bar across there um, so I'm just going to put some of this across the back and on the back side of the flat bar and then I can while that's drying I can clean up all my other shit stuff all my other stuff children may be watching um, and then I've got to drill a bunch of holes and do put some plug welds and jack the thing up and weld that on hopefully that got enough stay in it. Once the cover and everything's on there that'll kind of help with a bit of um, stability as well. This flat bar will also give me something solid to like tap a thread to and screw it to. Maybe. Not sure how I'm going to fix that cover on yet but could use rib nuts. Might as well. Might as well go and buy some more um, six mil uh, little dome head allen screw things. They're actually a pain because I haven't got socket adapters that can go onto them so you have to use the Allen key all the time. I should probably go and buy at least a 6mm one for um, doing this car. Anyway, well through primer. <clears throat> okay, probably have a mask. Oh, 
the stuff goes everywhere. Oops. Oops. Especially when you're out, it's breaking right up on the Ow. Stranded whale getting out right under there, but anyway, um, must be not go too close to the boys at home. you guys are wondering what's going on with this Gibson Explorer style guitar body back here. This is my son's um, first kind of real project. It uh, started off as a school project for tech classes and he decided he wanted to build himself a bass guitar. So here it is, this is all recycled, recycled Rimu. Um, he cut it all out at school. I've got a friend of mine to cut the pockets with a CNC router and then between him and I we've worked out where to drill all the holes and stuff like that. Um, I'm helping him with the, or kind of guiding him, he's doing all the spraying. I might show him the odd coat how I would approach it and then he's doing this candy green finish on here. So hopefully we'll get that dialed in in the next couple of days before its final coats are clear and yeah. I just got to be careful not to make a mess or bump into it or scratch it or just be my general rough bastard on it and near it, around it, because I'm still in the rugged make a big mess grindy stages in the garage at the moment, so everything's chaos. Trust me, it's hard. It's, it's chaos. Alrighty, um, just going to mark where I'm going to make some holes in this little kick up thing here um, and this uh, there's already some holes here they were from drilling out parts of the old underfloor brace from oh, what was that from when we were cutting all that crap out um, so I'm going to do some plug welds and that into my flat bar um, but I'll stagger them sort of one up one down one up one down sort of thing uh, just got to make sure it'll work out how far up I can go because I might the flat bar might sit slightly lower than this and um, then I'll have a bit of scope there to trim some of that excess off the top hopefully and even it out but I'm going to put the jack under here and push it up to level it out and square it up with my flat bar and then I can clamp it all up plug it all up and then she's she's done until the next thing look how dirty I am I've been under there wire wheeling and Oh, it's a mess. I'm not looking forward to doing the rest of the floor, but most of the main floor is actually new, so it doesn't need much. But all the boot under the boot and under the back footwell, uh, back passenger seat side, that's all scaly and and in your eye. Anyway, uh, mark out some holes and get them drilled. All right, this time, the GoPro thing is having a little spaz. Um, Okay, so there's my, where my flat bar is going to be clamped across the back there. I've got the oh, motorcycle jack. There's my knees cracking um, up under there. You can actually see the that flat bar is kind of, kind of underhang. And I'm going to weld around that, that brace. I could trim that back later on, but I might leave the length in it for a bit of structural integrity. Yes, that's about the only integrity. They will be, but um, anyway, so I'll start welding all this in again. It's about it's about 400 degrees out here on the driveway, afternoon sun where I live, um, middle of summer, and currently quarter past four. So it's right here. It's just like hot. So I'm gonna um, 
do some welding and get even hotter. Anyway, it's not, actually it's not crazy bad. You can actually touch the concrete, so that's a good thing. Well, you know when I said before it was hot, and then I said it wasn't that hot, well, it, it got hotter. Um, throw in a bit of upside down anxiety welding, and <laughs> when they're not going right, and yeah, pumps up the heart rate, gets the old sweat on, makes all the crap that's falling on your face stick to it, and, but yeah, we <laughs> got there then. So, Grab my little straight edge. So now that sits pretty square across there, square as it can be. Um, well, probably can be square, but as square as I can get it. Um, and it's actually dropped a little bit again now, but that's okay. We can't stick like a whole bunch of fingers under there anymore, so it looks heaps better than the flesh. Don't know how it looks here. Um, yeah, and yeah, got my little extra brace up the back here welded in. That's made it way more sort of rigidy, rigidy. And uh, yeah, what a mess. Crikey, it's, it's hot at the moment, really, really hot. Uh, welded underneath, didn't come out as nice as I would have liked. I started blowing through. I'm not going to show you that, that's just way too embarrassing. Started blowing through in a few places, so I ended up building up the grumpy, gobby bits of weld, which kind of cleaned them up a little bit with the old power finger, but a um, bit of seam sealer will dress them a little bit more, unfortunately, but some days the welding's on, some days the welding's off. But anyway, that's enough for today, because she's hot and I'm thirsty, and I need to go and get cleaned up. Check it out. Remu, recycled Remu. If you don't know, Rimu is a native timber here in New Zealand. It's a, I guess you'd call it a hardwood. Once it's old, it's like, it's hard as steel, really hard to machine. Um, but yeah, it's really nice, nice timber. And my son's been working on this little project. So yeah, enough for today. Be back in tomorrow. Got to chase around some of those pinholes and get a little bit of each prime or something to seal it up so we don't have to clean off so much surface rust when we come back to doing the final paints and under seals and stuff like that. But yeah, recycle, save the planet. Recycle your cars, save the planet. Don't buy those EVs and stuff, they're just gonna wreck the planet. Next day, so just carrying on in the boot floor. I don't, can't remember what I said I was gonna do in the last where I cut off yesterday, but I'm um, just going to chase a few pinholes and a little patch here and there and there was this this bit here which is the, I'm just going to put a little patch in there, there was a few holes where I drilled through through the uh, spot welds getting something off there at some point, I think it was a spare wheel brackety thing and yeah ended up drilling through so I'll, I was going to just weld up the, the um, the holes but I decided to put a wee patch in there instead um, 
couple of bits here. I'm going to chase those around, see if I can. Otherwise, I might have to put a little patch in there too. A couple of bits of daylight I can see through some of the work done on here. So I'll plug those from the inside. And yeah, a couple of little bits of daylight down here as well. Might drill these out first. We'll see how we go. And yeah, then clean up and chuck a bit more each primer around the place. Mm. Hey guys, well, you obviously seen what I was doing there, which is putting a, oh my god, it's a crooked swage into the, uh, the old spear wheel delete sort of thing. Um, I should have put a swage in it before I put that piece in, but I didn't actually have a bead roller then, and I could have done it that way, but I didn't even think of it, to be honest, I think. That was about 18 months ago. Um, so I thought I'd have a crack at putting a swage in there in situ. So I'll show you how I did it. You've obviously seen how I hammered that, but this is what I used underneath. Is this doohickey here. Your motorcycle jack. It's done more stuff, nothing to do with motorcycles than uh, with motorcycles. So that's what I used up underneath. I've just got this big hunk of, hunk of timber cut a channel in it, marked out roughly where it was going to sit and then just started pounding some steel trying to stretch it through there. It was looking better if it was steel but I didn't have anything that would work. So on the whole it's worked, it's taken the, the pop out of that piece so it's a win in my book. Alright, clean up again and I'm going to spray some Duplicolor Rust Fix around some of this um sort of what do you call it like dusty rust i've wire brushed it all and wire wheeled it all and stuff i just want to get some of that on there to sort of convert it as they say and then i might squirt a little bit of black etch around in here there's me uh duply color this stuff not sponsored in any way but i've been using this stuff for years on uh different projects and it's always a good good product um it served me well and uh you can get it you can get it in new zealand you can pretty much get it anywhere i think you can get it into the us and canada and stuff but um yeah so when i get into these places where you can get that kind of powdery you know, sand off the the worst of the rusty filmy stuff but then you can use this and it kind of you can kind of layer it in there and get it into those areas that are kind of hard to get to and it converts it into a black edge um, so I always kind of do that once I've kind of like wire brushed and sanded and stuff and then I'll use a black etch primer under here um, and yeah it just kind of seals everything up before I put sort of body deadeners and any other things and you can always take it off again if you want to put some other paint system on there but 
in places like this, just a normal black etch is pretty good. I find it is. But I'm just not an expert though, it's just what I do. Just remember that. Well, there we have it. As you can see, my still got lots of hammer marks and that in there, but that's that's fine when you look at the rest of the boot floor. So it kind of matches now. It's kind of beat up looking, but yeah. On ultimate goal was to kind of try and lift this boot floor and see if I could do it without having to replace the whole boot floor. And ultimately, I've done that and braced up the back of it and got that swage in there to take the pop out of the that area so that's a bit more rigid now so that's that's good it's got a little bit of movement there but that's all right it's probably soft as probably just put fingerprints all through that through it yeah so it's all in sort of like a black etch primer i managed to get all up inside the rear fenders and that as well i've still got to get in and seam seal all behind all my welds which is something i always do just to seal them up from the inside as much as possible I'll seam seal them and then i'll spray some um sort of body deadness stuff and that in there as well and that always kind of just if you can stop that moisture getting in behind them then uh you'll keep the old tin worm at bay a little longer still more to do in here yet i've got to figure out all my plumbing for the air ride uh got that one part of my box cover thing made i might run a couple of beads through that though before i fit that up make sure it, i can do it and still got to work out something to tidy that thing up like some kind of thing i don't know also i better do something with that um filler because it sort of needs a drain in it because it can trap you know, if you wash this thing and or you're out in the rain, this thing here potentially could fill up with water or run down inside there somehow. So I might put a little drain in it somehow that maybe runs down and just a little hose that runs down in parallel with, with that somehow. Just so it drains out onto the ground. Um, it's just going to be water, hopefully, that drains out of there. Yeah, so there we have it. Lots of hammering and beating up of the old boot floor, trunk floor, you know, there. Well guys, I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Um, I'm working in the boot floor and stuff, it's incredibly awkward. But I achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was to bring that bowed and bent up floor back up a bit, straighten it out somewhat. It doesn't have to be super straight, just needs to be strong, rigid, rust, rust free and i will um be putting a sort of body deadener type stuff coating and that all over that anyway as well and then there'll be probably carpet and crap like that still heaps more to go in the boot yet still got to seam seal everything still got to figure out all the plumbing and everything for the air ride figure out where i'm going to put a tank um i've got a couple of tanks but i think they're actually too big for a good location to put them i'm not really sure where i'm going to put them thanks for watching haven't subscribed yet it'd be really cool if you did and if you want to see some more updates on the old area 51 you should subscribe and maybe hit the little bell thing um, other than that take it easy and see you next time peace